Now, as we watched the protest unfold, we know that at first the students' anger, I suppose, and frustrations was directed at universities, but it very quickly was turned to government as students turned to government to say, what are you doing to firstly ensure that we're able to be educated at tertiary institutions? And then what are you doing to ensure that we're employable after we have our degrees? Now, according to your survey, how are students feeling towards government? Are they optimistic that they will be able to work and live successfully in South Africa? Give us an indication. So students are staying up to date with what's happening because they need to realize that they obviously are the point where they realize that they come out of the university, they need to be able to find employment. And they currently do not believe that the system that has all the, and even the economic policies that have been created by government will enable them to be able to find gainful employment. So all, all of this, the frustration probably starts from it today. We're seeing high, high levels of corruption unprecedented amounts of corruption that we have not seen. So we have the money. There is money available in the country, but it's not being used properly. And that should be concerning for them because ultimately that will affect their employment opportunities as well. If we're giving bodies for jobs, whereas I've been to university or tertiary and I've empowered myself, but I'm not able to get a job, then it's not hitting home. So I think that's where the frustration with the students come, and that's why the urgency in the protest now that we see it. Absolutely, and I think as South Africans, we can really understand those frustrations as, as we look at our levels of unemployment. Certainly, um, the amended figure that was announced today now sitting at 25.5%. Can you give us an indication um, from your perspective of any other striking results that came out of this survey? Well, one of the questions that we found, which I think is encouraging, is that a lot of students, I think just over 50% of them, actually said that they are currently engaged in mentorship programs, which is important because I think um, students need to realize now that they need to get off, you know, and get themselves into the employment market. And the only way you do that is by forming relationships and by learning outside of what universities can teach you or what the textbook can teach you. So quite a lot of them have said that they are involved in either mentorship, internship, coaching, some level of being in direct contact with people in employment in the, obviously their fields of study. And linked to this was that earlier this year we did a survey for amongst professionals themselves who are already working, most of whom have their own practices. And they also said that they spend at least an hour every week mentoring and coaching young people. So this is, I think, is important that the there is not this transfer of skills that is happening, which is what we need as well, because a lot of us Times, I think especially most of us would recall that when you go to your first interview, you're most likely to hear that you don't have experience. So by entering into some sort of a mentorship coaching program, you can start gaining that experience while you're still in university. So that was one of the important things we found. The other thing we found, which is a little bit concerning for us, is a lot of the students said that because they have this, they don't believe that they don't have faith at least in the current economic circumstances of South Africa, they are willing to look outside of the country for employment. Which is quite sad because it would mean that now we're losing the very scarce skills that we need in South Africa. So they are more open to leaving the country and seeking opportunities outside, which, like I said, is just a problem for us in that we need to keep more and more people in the country. We need to get all the people back who's left South Africa back into the country so that we can grow our own economy. So that was again one of the other things that we found. And lastly, another um, what I'd like to highlight, which is obviously from us from a financial financial services perspective. We did ask them as well, do they feel that students are equipped with financial savviness, financial knowledge? And most of them did actually indicate that they would have preferred to have this knowledge at a much younger age while still in school. And I think that's important because that speaks to us changing the culture of South Africans, learning to save, learning to budget, very basic thing. But I think we tend to believe that this will sort itself out, it will fix itself, and we really need to go back to the drawing board and say, how do we introduce kids from a very young age? how to save, how to budget. Because by creating that type of culture, that group of people will also be in a better position to start saving and making the right decisions today to be able to look after themselves and their children in future. Machabi, thank you so much for speaking to us today.